Our host this evening is one of the most exciting names in Australian comedy. You know him from the ABC's The Weekly with Charlie Pickering and tomorrow tonight, please welcome to the stage, Charlie Pickering! Hello! Hello everyone, welcome to the 2022 National Science Quiz tonight. We will pit two teams against each other and find out which one will be our national science quiz champion for this year, and more importantly, which one will be covered in slime because they lost. How exciting is that? <laughs> My name is Charlie Pickering. I will be your host to guide you through this evening, which will be a celebration of science. So without further ado, would you please get out your hands, bang them together, we're in a huge round of applause, and welcome to the, our two teams to the stage. Now, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we are gathered today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We pay respect to their elders, past and present. And we also celebrate the uniqueness of knowledges, cultures, histories, languages and science that have been created and shared for the last 65,000 years right here in this continent. And a big welcome to everyone joining us here in the incredible Edge Theatre at Federation Square tonight. And if you're joining us online at home via our live stream, welcome to you as well. We're excited to bring you tonight's quiz live wherever you are around Australia or around the world. And there's a lot at stake tonight. Our winning team will each take home one of these beautiful trophies. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Polymers at work. <laughs> for the scientists in the room, <laughs> if I remember chemistry correctly from school. Uh, and of course, our losing team will be doused generously in the most beautiful thick green slime I have ever seen in my life, ladies and gentlemen. So how about that? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Someone's ready. And I remember that you can play along with our quiz tonight, whether you're here in the theatre tonight or playing along at home, and you can test your own scientific knowledge. Join our Slido poll via the QR code on the screen right now. There's a big one up there, and I'm sure there's one on the screen right now while you're watching at home. We are going to be awarding $500 to our audience winner in the theatre tonight, which we'll be announcing at the end of the quiz. And at home, $250 will go to our at-home winner, and those results will be posted on our website at the end of the quiz. Now, let's meet our two teams tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Our first team captain appears every weekday on our tellies for ABC News Breakfast. Now, we had hoped to get the far more talented and stunning Gail Warnings with us tonight, but she was otherwise disposed, so we're putting up with her alter ego here, our most beloved early morning weatherman, former Navy officer and bona fide meteorologist, please welcome Nate Byrne! <laughs> Joining Nate's team tonight is a science communicator completing her PhD in astrophysics at the University of New South Wales. Spending most of her time looking up at the stars, she was once traumatised by a child in an observatory. We'll find out more about that in a moment. A Wiradjuri woman who is proud to represent Indigenous women in science. She's also known as Astro Kirsten on her very popular TikTok channel. Please welcome Kirsten Banks! Yeah. <laughs> And rounding out Nate's team tonight is a New Zealand-born evolutionary mathematician from the Centre of Excellence for Plant Success based in the University of Tasmania. She enjoys delving deep into mathematical equations that would scare most of us to death and once annoyed her sixth form chemistry teacher so much that he took revenge on her. Would you please welcome Professor Barbara Holland? <laughs> so Barbara, please tell us, 
why did your teacher want to take revenge on you? Well, we had our chemistry class just after we had PE, and so we'd all turn up like pretty sweaty and disgusting, and we got out our impulse deodorant sprays, and we shh. <laughs> and the chemistry teacher thought impulse deodorant was so disgusting that he got revenge by raiding the organic chemistry cupboard and getting out some sort of festering rotten egg type smelling chemical to drown out the stench of our deodorant. Oh, so, so he got lynx. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Lynx Africa. And, and so a love for science was born too. Um, Kirsten, it's great to have you here tonight and I'm curious to know what happened at that observatory that scared you so much? So I used to be a tour guide at Sydney Observatory and I was giving a tour and talking about black holes and spaghettification. What, hang on, what, what, what is spaghettification? <laughs> First of all, it's a great dinner. Uh, <laughs> but no, when you're near a stellar mass black hole, so a black hole that's been created from the death of a massive star, if you're going feet first, like down a slippery side, your feet are getting pulled faster than your head and so you get strung out like a long piece of spaghetti, hence spaghettification. Wow. And this, I've just explained this during the tour, and this little girl shoots up her hand and says, so would the blood be the spaghetti sauce? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've not recovered. <laughs> it's been five years. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I hope never to find out. Yeah. I, what, are the, what are my chances of ending up sucked into a black hole? Our nearest one's like 1,500 light years away. You're good. I should be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good news. <laughs> now, Nate, uh, yes. it's lovely to have you here with us tonight. Uh, Very you. happy to see you. Uh, although, we are disappointed that Gail Warnings couldn't join us tonight, although I do believe you know her very well. I, I do, intimately. Um, yeah, for, for the uninitiated, I, as a weather presenter on the television that does breakfast, sometimes I'm made to do hilarious things, including uh, becoming my old, alter ego, Gail Warnings, but she's very needy. The makeup takes far too long, um, <laughs> and you couldn't afford her. <laughs> so I, I'm feeling it instead, and I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Well, it's wonderful to have you. Please, round of applause for Nate's team. <laughs> and let's get to know our second team captain now. He's an award-winning comedian, screenwriter, and science communicator, and host of the recent ABC TV science documentary series, Our Brain. Taking a particular interest in all things supernatural and weird, he once skydived with a Rubik's Cube and solved it in time to deploy his parachute. <laughs> We're glad he's here in one place. Please welcome Lawrence Long. <laughs> Joining Lawrence's team tonight is an environmental hydrogeologist from the University of Canberra. He's a Kamilaroi man living in Ngunnawal country in Canberra. He once thought he was the only indigenous hydrogeologist in Australia, but recently found two more, so he tripled his network. He also builds 1980s BMX bikes in his spare time so he can finally have all the bikes he dreamed of having when he was a kid. Put your hands together for Associate Professor Bradley Mogridge. And our final panellist tonight is a quantum physicist and chief investigator from the Centre of Excellence for Engineered Quantum Systems based at the University of Queensland. Although she has never set her science lab on fire, she once never. proved the laws of physics by exploding an egg into her kitchen ceiling. Just give a warm <laughs> welcome to Associate Professor Jackie Romero. Okay, Jackie, so, so what happened with this egg and are you still allowed to cook in your house? Uh, yes, I am still allowed. I'm the only cook in the house. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> um, I was preparing my first year physics lessons and got hungry. I thought I'll make myself a hard-boiled egg and totally forgot about it. And the next thing I heard was boom. And then I remembered the hard-boiled egg. So it turns out, actually, when the water has all evaporated and it's just the battle between the pot and the egg, Pot wins, the egg explodes. <laughs> <laughs> so some of it's still left in our ceiling, actually. It's oh very hard God. to clean. It's very hard to clean. <laughs> um, Brad, I've got to ask you, 1980s BMX bikes, that is a very cool hobby. How many do you have? I probably can't reveal my address. Yeah, not a good <laughs> idea. Absolutely not. Yeah, oh, I've probably got uh, five pre-1985, so they're the old school and a couple of dragsters, even the stick shift on the dragster. Oh, that's so, super old school. Yeah, yeah. That is good, yeah. yeah. And, and, and do, your, do your kids appreciate how cool they are? 
when we go on old BMX cruises, they, they used to, but now they're just bits of metal that sit in, the, <laughs> <laughs> sit in the garage. And actually, I just missed, there's an old school, they have a swap meet every Sunday, oh, first Sunday, I think it is, at St Kilda, so I missed it. I forgot all about it. Oh, because we dragged you here for the yeah. quiz. Oh, well, <laughs> you'll have to just come back in a month's time yeah. for the next one. Yeah. Um, now, Lawrence, great to have you here. Yep. How confident are you feeling tonight? I have to say that I'm confident we're going to win. Uh, I, I know we're not going to get slimed, but good science is all about having contingencies <laughs> in case your hypothesis is wrong. <laughs> but I have been preparing. Uh, last night I read the entire internet. <laughs> so tonight I will show off my scientific knowledge about this wonderful flat earth of ours. <laughs> It's really funny. That could just be an elaborate cover story for the fact that you were baking crystal meth in the car park. <laughs> breaking bad stuff. But I, I assure all of our sponsors that was not occurring. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to, well, time to introduce some people who are going to be helping us out tonight. Throughout the show, we're going to get some expert assistance from our very own National Science Quiz Lab Assistants. Please meet them now. We've got Josh, a science communicator from the Center of Excellence in Excite on Science at the University of Melbourne. And joining Josh is Caitlin, a PhD candidate from the University of Queensland who also teaches aerobics. Welcome to our lab assistants. Josh, you're really going to be lighting things up for us tonight. Oh, you bet. And um, hopefully sliming a team later as well. Yeah, have you, have you picked out anyone in particular that you, you're desperate to slime? Or? Uh, well, Lawrence looks too prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's bad news for Nate, I think. <laughs> I, I want to get slimed. I, that's the whole point of television, isn't it? He's going to sabotage like, us, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I may sabotage you. All right, Sorry. but no, no tanking just to be slimed, okay, all right? I want fine. full blown competition tonight. <laughs> the trophies are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. That's right. Well, yeah. let's see how we go. Can I get a round of applause for our lab assistants tonight, Caitlin and Josh? The rules tonight are pretty simple. For each multiple choice question, our teams will have 45 seconds to discuss their answers amongst themselves before making their decision. In the case of a team disagreement, the team captains are in charge of making that decision and will be blamed if they're wrong. I will be awarding five points for each team who gets the correct answer. Now, uh, for those of you who are playing online, you also have 45 seconds to select your answers before the poll closes. And the person who has answered the most number of questions correctly in the shortest time possible will be at the top of the leaderboard. And please make sure that you are logged in. I have to say this. Make sure you're logged into the correct room to be playing along at home. There's one room uh, online for those playing in the theatre tonight, another for those playing at home uh, over, over, uh, online. If you're in the wrong room, you won't be in the running for the prizes. So just make sure you're logged into the wrong, right room. So That's like Schrodinger's sorry. game. <laughs> <laughs> Which box do they go in? Is yes. That right? yes. <laughs> and in one of the boxes is the correct answer. Gotcha. Yes, I am assured. All right, are we all clear on the rules? Are we all logged yes. on and ready to play? Yes. All right, let's get going. Let us begin, ladies and gentlemen, and the first round of questions. Question one. Take a look at this video, and I'll ask you a question afterwards. When you drop a slinky, it, like collapses onto the, the last ring and then it all falls at the same time instead of falling as one unit like that. All right, so we're gonna drop them at the same time. You should see this stay pretty still and this just collapse onto the top of that before it falls. Three, two, one, drop. Very cool stuff. So the question is, when you suspend a slinky and then release it, why does the bottom of the slinky move last, appearing to defy gravity? Is it A, air pressure pushes up from the bottom of the slinky? B, the slinky contracts at the same rate as it is falling? Or C, the centre of gravity for the slinky is at the base? You have 45 oh seconds gosh. to decide your answer. While Josh and Caitlin fiddle about with some slinkies. Doing some deep science over here. Oh. 
Make sure you're on your slider, getting your answers in, ready to play. There's some strong debate going on on Nate's team. Hesitant, confident. Time is nearly up. Make sure you get your answers in at home or in the theatre. Time is up. So, let's see what our audience thought the answer was. A, B or C. Let's have a look. Go to Slido now. Ooh. Strong support for option B with 67%. Some for A, some for C. I don't know that that helps our teams because they've already locked in their answers. Yep. <laughs> All right, so captains, please reveal your answers. Nate's team has gone with B. Lawrence's team also yeah. with B. And the correct answer is B. Yeah! yeah. Five uh, points each. Take this Strong star. Oh, the slinky oh. contracts <laughs> at the same rate that it is falling. Whoa. Yeah, he's getting professional now. <laughs> You don't want to know when he gets three right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Layers. <laughs> All right, we're in. Let's strap in, guys. Now, for those wanting a bit of an explanation, when it's suspended, the tension in the slinky pulling up balances equally with the force of gravity pulling down. When it's released, the bottom of the slinky remains motionless until all the coils are fully contracted, and only then it starts to fall. All right, someone wrote that for me. <laughs> Time for the next question. Question two. Oh, okay. In Australia, First Nations people were the first astronomers. On the island of Myr in the eastern Torres Strait, elders observed the twinkling stars to predict A, an approaching storm, B, an eclipse of the moon, or C, the appearance of the evening star. You have 45 seconds. Fascinating history of First Nations astronomers in Australia. This is just one of thousands of amazing things discovered. Deba debated amongst yourselves at home or here in the theatre. A lock in your answer. Captains, how are we feeling? We confident? We feeling good? Time is up. So, captains, keep your answers hidden. Let's see what the audience thought. Heading over to Slido. Ooh. Ooh. Strong support for option A, an approaching storm. Mm. Team captains, reveal your answers. A. 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 And A. <laughs> and the correct answer is A, an approaching storm. Yes. Yes. Now, the twinkling of stars is called scintillation, and it's caused by turbulent pockets of air in our atmosphere reflecting the starlight. Heavy wind made stars twinkle faster, and gentle wind made them twinkle slower. And the Merriam people learned how to read the subtle difference in twinkling to forecast the weather and predict seasonal change and help with their navigation at sea. Incredible discovery. Next question. <sighs> And for this one, uh, before we reveal the next question, uh, it's, I've been told that this question is based on a, an extremely hazardous material. So can I invite our lab assistants up here? Now, please don't get close, guys. Be very, very careful. They're bringing it all up right now. And I, I remind you all that our lab assistants have training. They know exactly what they're doing. Safety, Brilliant. of course, comes first in any laboratory. All right, so can we reveal the hazardous substance inside? That's a banana. I think we could have been a bit more excited by the banana, ladies and gentlemen. Banana. So why are we talking about bananas? Well, our next question is a video submission from Rosie at Snug Primary School in Tasmania. 
Why bananas curvy? Why are bananas curvy? Is it A, the tips of the bananas dry out and cause the curve to develop? Oh. B, the banana peel grows slower than the banana fruit, causing the cu curve to develop? Or is it C, bananas grow away from the direction of gravity, causing the banana to bend? 45 seconds starts now. Great work, guys. Don't get too, don't get too cocky. We don't want any accidents. <laughs> so is it A, the tips of the bananas dry out and cause the curve to develop? B, the banana peel grows slower than the banana fruit, causing the curve to develop? Or C, bananas grow away from the direction of gravity, causing the banana to bend? A, B or C? Get your answers in. Nate, Nate's team seem, seem confident here. <laughs> okay, time is up. Time is up. All right, now, <coughs> captains, keep your answers hidden. Oh, Let's hidden. see what the audience thought of our banana theories. Oh. 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 So the strongest answer there with nearly oh. half is B, the banana peel grows slower than the banana fruit, oh. causing the curve to develop. Let's see if our teams agreed with the audience. Nate's team, your answer. Oh. C. Oh, we, we have a weather presenter, a mathematician, oh. and an astrophysicist. And Lawrence. <gasps> yes. C as well. Well, I thought she f first said, why are bananas scurvy? Uh, <laughs> and I was waiting for a pirate answer, but yeah. C will do. No such luck. We've both gone with C, and the correct answer is C. You're right again. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas grow away from the direction of gravity, <laughs> causing the banana go. to bend. Good job. Good job. And this is, this is amazing. Plants sense gravity and can grow towards it or against it. Mm. And the curve that develops in Cavendish bananas is a great example of a, a plant growing against the force of gravity, a term called negative gravitropism. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that plants actually uh, sense gravity is heavy starch granules fall to the bottom of their cells. Uh, oh. And so oh. there's a, there's a buildup of starch uh, at the bottom of cells, and that's how the, how, which way they know is down. Obviously, they don't know from sentient cognitive thought, yeah, okay. unless there's something we really need to find out about bananas <laughs> and stop eating them immediately. All right, let's move on to the next question. Question four. Oof, oof. And for our next question, we are joined by a very special guest, mathematician, author, and all-round science ambassador, Adam Spencer, with this question. Yeah. G'day, Adam Spencer here, standing Whoa. in the foyer of the Hilton Hotel. So that's how I roll, and spinning round and round and round. <laughs> so I tried to ask this question for the National Science Quiz 2022. On the topic of spinning round, how many times does the Earth spin around on its axis as it completes one revolution of the Sun? Is it A, 364.25 revolutions, B, 365.25 revolutions, or C, 366.25 revolutions. Oh. Good luck. <laughs> the ever-evolving Adam Spencer there, who made me quite nauseous um, from, the, from the spinning. From the spinning, absolutely. Good friend of mine, Adam Spencer. So how many times does the Earth rotate on its axis in a full year, in a, uh, a full solar year? Is it 364.25, 365.25, or 366.25, you have 45 seconds. Hang on, were you trying to copy okay. off Lawrence's hey, name hey. then? <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, straight guys. away. Please oh, you knew it straight away? Of course. Oh. Oh. Well, there's really a lot of pressure on you now, Astro Kirsten. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay, our answers are locked in. Everyone's locked in at home. I think we used Captains, for the ads. don't reveal your answers just yet. Let's see what the audience thought. 364 and a quarter, 365 and a quarter, or 366 and a quarter. And they're all in on B. All in on B, 365 and a quarter. Captains, reveal your answers. To B or not to B? B and C. Ooh. So, what Astro Kirsten, how confident are you at this um, point? Well, I, I celebrated before you even gave the answer, so I think I'm pretty confident. Wow, <laughs> Astro Kirsten is pretty confident. Lawrence, well, Astro Lawrence, how, how confident are you? We always thought there was a margin of error and being <laughs> like the obvious answer. <laughs> so, as I learned in high school, multiple choice questions, C. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, what? I, I, Hang on, if you give C on all of them, you're bound to get some right? Is that what you're saying? That is statistics. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is, I mean, this is a great showdown. Is it B for Nate's team? Is it C for Lawrence's team? The correct answer is C. Lawrence's team gets the point. Oh, I know. Oh, oh, she's ruined it. So, and, the, and I think, I, hang on, like, I know there's... Can, you how are you feeling, <laughs> Astro Kirsten? Someone take my PhD away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so so no, I'm guessing it's because of the, it's like a, the whole solar year when it gets right back to the right spot. Not, ah, no, it, not just it, one round yeah. yeah. mm. It is actually because we, and, and, and I thank Adam Spencer for asking this question and in doing so forcing me to have to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's true that a year uh, on Earth is 365 and a quarter days, but it's not quite the same as the number of full rotations that the Earth completes mm. in a year. You see, in moving around the sun once, if we revolved only once in a year, and you look at this, then the same part of the Earth would be facing the sun for the entirety of the year, so we wouldn't experience days and nights, mm. if that makes sense. So there's one rotation of the, one revolution of the Earth, hang on, one rotation of the Earth, in one revolution of the sun, as it is, so that we experience it differently. You then add on all of the days of the year, and it gets to 366 right. and a quarter, which gives us the experience of 24 hour passing days and one year passing. But Have I explained that adequately? I think so. <laughs> really but why is the Earth not flat? Why is the Earth not flat? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We'll get to that in a later okay, question, right. I'm sure. <laughs> And that later question will be, why did we slime Lawrence? <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for our next question. Oh, tough one. Oh, it's a multiple choice again. What is the connection between insects and chocolate? chocolate? Is it A, cacao plants need flies to carry pollen for fertilisation? B, bees carry pathogenic diseases between cacao plants? Or C, people who eat a lot of chocolate produce a chemical in their sweat that attracts mosquitoes. Oh. 45 seconds starts now. Can Nate's team confidently bounce back after the disaster of question four? <laughs> Lawrence's team riding high on the success of question four. Can they back it up on question five? And how are you going at home? Do you think you know the answer? Time is up. So what is the connection between insects and chocolate? Is it A, that cacao plants need flies to carry pollen for fertilisation? B, that bees carry pathogenic diseases between cacao plants? Or C, that people who eat a lot of chocolate have a lot of mosquitoes around them? Well, let's see what our audience thought. Ooh, pretty, pretty evenly spread. Wow, that's a tough good But a strong support for cacao plants need flies to carry pollen for fertilisation. I don't know how the chocoholics feel about flies being so deeply involved in the chocolate process. <laughs> so, team captains, A, B or C, reveal your answers. Oh. A, they let us down before. <laughs> <laughs> they let us down last time, so don't be yeah. too confident just yet. 
And the correct answer is A. Yes, oh. cacao plants need flies to carry pollen yes. for fertilisation. Um, cacao plants produce flowers both male and fe with female, male and female parts. They're hermaphrodites, but they cannot self-fertilise. So tiny flies carry pollen between cacao plants, so fertilisation can occur. And we need that to produce the seeds that we make chocolate from. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a quick score check. Oh, no. Can I ask our lab assistants up on stage to let us know who's winning, who's losing, who's got their work cut out for them? Josh and Caitlin in position. Nate's team on 20 points. Lawrence's oh. team on 25 points. It's all right, we can come back. We can come back. Good. It is close, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, it is time for a guess the question. And our first guess the question. Uh, is guess the Ig Nobel. Now, we all know the Nobel Prize, uh, but have you heard of the Ig Nobel Prize? Yes. This is an annual prize that celebrates 10 unusual or trivial achievements in scientific research at each year that first make people laugh and then make them think. And I'm going to provide you with three options of actual, real-life scientific research that has been conducted and then read out a series of clues and the first person on either team to buzz in with the correct, correct answer will win 10 points. Now, let's test the buzzers. Nate, team, show us your buzzer. Lawrence's team, your buzzer. Aggressively attention-seeking, both of them. All right, the buzzers are working. Your ignoble choices are... A. Research about why rabbits eat their own poo. B. Research about why wombat poo yes. is shaped it's like a cube. Like There's a theme nice. building here, ladies and gentlemen. C. Research about the internal poo pressure of a penguin. Whoa! Oh. I actually think Nate's team was in first. Oh. Just, just think that <gasps> Nate's team was in first. So is it A, B, oh, hang on. Have you buzzed in already? You haven't even had a clue. We haven't had a clue You want to go in without a clue? These are all Sorry. options. I just oh, realised oh. they're, they're yeah, all yeah, options. They're I just realised before, right. we, before we run... I've, I've obviously not paid any attention. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Crack on. I it. just wanted to be These Lawrence. are the options. These are all real bits of research that happened oh. this year. That's why I was applauding them. Yeah, yes. right. It's so good I'll, science. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give both teams a chance to withdraw their buzzer uh. if you would like to hear some clues. But if you want to go in without clues, all of these are real research. I definitely think Lawrence got it first. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to at least hear one clue? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Let's get all right. So these, I'll explain again. These are real pieces of research, but only one of them won the Ig Nobel Prize. Okay. Ah, gotcha. Oh, 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 but we've got any clue. No, but I know the answer. Uh, oh. <laughs> what do we do in this situation? <laughs> But don't you want to verify... Okay, yeah, it's okay. Let's verify the, let's verify the answer. Are you happy to at least hear one clue? Yes. <laughs> I'm not doubting you. <laughs> well, fractures have opened up pretty quickly on Lawrence's team, I'll say that. I don't, know if, I don't know if they'll hold it together to the end of the night. All right. So, first clue. This research was presented at an American Physical Society conference on fluid dynamics in 2018 oh. Oh. by a team of Australian and US scientists. You have buzzed in over here. Very confident, this, Lawrence's team. Is it A, B, or C? Uh, we're going to say B. You're going with B. Research about why... Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> just just applauding. It's just rude yeah. now, yeah. is what it is. <laughs> Research about why wombat poo is shaped like a cube. So you are correct. Ten yes! points. Yes! Oh, well done. <laughs> That's right. It is B. The team of researchers from the University of Tasmania and the Georgia Institute of Technology in the US were awarded the Ig Nobel for their discovery about the musculature of the wombat's intestine that gives it the unique ability to squeeze out cube-shaped poos. And it's a completely it's unique damn. ability here on planet Earth. I myself I have been confused. trying for no, a number of years. <laughs> Not once. Interesting other fact about wombat poo is that wombats apparently 
use these cubic poos as a form of communication. Uh, we haven't figured out what they're communicating yet. <laughs> Uh, I, I like... myself, whenever I use feces for communication, it's <laughs> largely in protest. <laughs> uh, not so... wholly in protest. <laughs> <laughs> I never <laughs> doubted you, Jackie, for so, one second. Congratulations, Jackie and Lawrence. Ten points for Jackie <laughs> and Lawrence's team. And Bradley. <laughs> and I would have said BQ. <laughs> one of our lab assistants, Caitlin, has a very special something to bring out right now. Oh. Is it a poo? Oh. Caitlin has a baby wombat. Oh. Oh. Is it really? So just please. Oh, 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 oh. 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 oh, oh God! <laughs> <laughs> it's not an actual baby wombat. It's okay, ladies it's and gentlemen. I, uh, <laughs> I think oh, I just did a square poo just there. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's even brown coloured. <laughs> Mr. Wombat. Vombatus, Vombatus. Oh. A, s <laughs> a square poo for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you get a poo, you get a poo. <laughs> Just in case Charlie decides to throw his at you. <laughs> well, that is the end of our uh, guess the round. It's time to move on to a rapid fire round now. This is a true or false round. True. So, in the true or false round, <coughs> it's a speed round I'll be alternating, asking each panellist a total of two true or false questions, each for a total of 12 questions in this mm. round. Five points for a correct answer, but five points off for a wrong answer. Ooh. And our theatre audience and Give at home, you can all play along, but you have to get your answers in before we hear the answers, uh, hear the true or false answers from our players on stage. So make sure you're quick on Slido to get your answers in and play along. Are we ready? Mm. Ready. Let's yes. begin. Barbara, true or false? Plants are better at converting sunlight into energy than solar panels. True. No, it is false. Oh. Solar panels are significantly more efficient <laughs> than photosynthesis. <laughs> Bradley, true or false? An ice cube made from fresh water will melt faster in a glass of fresh water than in a glass of salt water. True. That is true. That's absolutely right. Nice. Uh, because uh, fresh water has a lower density than salt water and allows the cold water to move to the bottom, warmer <laughs> water to the top to melt the ice cube. Uh, Kirsten, true or false? Farts in a spacecraft are a serious fire hazard. <laughs> true? Yeah, it is true. <laughs> the gases are highly flammable, which means ventilation on a spacecraft is key. <laughs> also can create some awkward nights in space. <laughs> Jackie, true or false, for a 50 kilometre bike ride, it's more energy efficient to take an electric pedal assisted bike than a regular push bike, excluding the energy used to manufacture the two bikes. So which is more energy efficient, a 50 kilometre ride on an electric pedal assisted bike or just pedaling it yourself? Wait, is that the true or false question? It's a true or false. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the true or false question, it is more energy efficient. I want to give you an extra point, but I'm not allowed. Uh, the, the question is, for a 50 kilometre bike ride, it is more energy efficient to have an electric pedal assisted bike than just pedalling. True. Uh, it is true. A battery is more efficient than a human body at converting uh, yeah. stored energy into motion. Yes. Nate, true or false? Rainbows are a complete circle. True. That is true. They are a complete circle. Wow. We just can't see it because of the horizon. The Earth gets in the way. Yeah. Oh. And Lawrence, true or false? Hydrogen is more likely to spontaneously combust than petrol. True. False. Oh, oh, mean, yes. Hydrogen is highly flammable. <laughs> to, yes, it's very easy once the correct answer yeah. is given to. <laughs> Barbara, true or false? What? If I'm paid $100 a day for 10 days, I will have more money than if I start with one dollar and double it every day for ten days. False. False. Yeah, absolutely That's right. So easy. How much? How much would I have if I doubled it and took one dollar? Uh, would you have like ten thousand and a thousand and twenty-four? That is correct. A thousand twenty-four. Oh. Well done. Oh. What? Oh. Bradley, true or false? Yes. There are more water molecules in one glass of water than there are glasses of water in the world's oceans. True. That is true. There are thousands of times more water molecules in one glass of water. Uh, true or false? Kirsten, 
It's impossible to have pink light in a rainbow. True. It is true. There is no pink wavelength. A rainbow is a refraction. Pink light is actually made up of red, blue and purple light. Jackie, true or false? I've got to get this right. <laughs> Capsaicin, the active substance in chilli, will add flavour to a curry. Um, true. No, it is false. <laughs> Capsaicin is actually an irritant and not a flavour. Oh. The heat and burning sensation we're experiencing oh, from chilli is caused by activating our pain senses. has nothing to do oh, with flavour in our mouth. Well. Nate, true or false? Rubies and sapphires are the same mineral. True, they just have different inclusions. That's right. That's yeah. absolutely right. True. Yeah. And true or false, Lawrence? Lizards can regrow an exact copy of their tails. True. No, no, it is false. false. Yeah, you, you always know it's second time <laughs> around. A very good second time around. See, when lizards regrow a severed tail, it's an imper imperfect cartilage tube and doesn't contain oh. a spinal column and nerves like the original. And I can't ah. believe that I'm tail shaming a lizard right <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, that is the end of our true or false round, ladies and gentlemen. Time for another score check. Oh, oh no. Oh. That no. got interesting there. We had a few incorrect answers from Lawrence, costing his team five points. I'm sorry. I was Strong <laughs> performance from Nate's team. Let's see how we're going. Assistants, let's get the numbers up here, but don't show them just yet. All right, Josh. Nate's team has 40 points. Yeah. Caitlin Lawrence's team has 35 points. Oh! <laughs> we got a live one here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is a close one. Well, let's get stuck into it again. Time for our next question. Another multiple choice round coming your way, ladies and gentlemen. Question six. And how are you going at home? Do you think you're winning? Oh, we're not. Oh, some people not happy. Maybe they're just still unhappy they didn't get a square poo. Who knows? <laughs> the night is young. All right, question number six. Microbes in our gut produce up to 13 litres of hydrogen gas a day, enough to make us explode. But we don't explode because, A, we burp and fart a lot. Speak for yourself. B, some microbes in the gut use this hydrogen in their metabolism. <laughs> Or C, the hydrogen gas spontaneously converts to water that is absorbed through the gut oh. wall. A, B or C, 45 oh. seconds. <laughs> that is a staggering amount of gas that we produce, isn't it? Of hydrogen. 13 litres of hydrogen a day produced in our gut. necessarily know the scientific reason for an answer, just go with your gut. Oh, Nate's team, they've got their answer locked in. Lawrence's team still debating it. Oh, time is up. Have you got your answer? Locked in, but do not reveal them. All right, let's see what our audience thought. So audience went very strong oh, with B. Some microbes in the gut use hydrogen in their metabolism. Ooh. Captains, reveal your answers. B and A. Oh, I am very gassy. You're very gassy. <laughs> yes. So you, you actually, you're confident that you're expelling 13 litres of hydrogen <laughs> per day. If you could hook me up, I could be a massive source of green power. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Come but, on. But given you work in an airtight TV studio, I feel sorry for my <laughs> role. Uh, hydrogen's a colourless, odourless game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Julie corrected. The correct answer, though, is B, Lawrence. Wow. Correct. Oh, well done. <laughs> Microbes in the gut use hydrogen We're in back. their metabolism. We're back. We're back. <laughs> and this stops us from exploding, but it is what creates the fragrant component of farts. Oh. Because what... Uh, different bacteria combine the hydrogen with, with <laughs> say, for example, sulphate ions to create hyd uh, hydrogen sulphide gas, which has an egg smell. And um, 
This is some great acting right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is live streamed to a couple who are playing along from home tonight. <laughs> oh. All right, moving along to... Oh, no, first we have an experiment. We have our lab assistants mm -hmm. are going to perform experiment tonight. Josh? That's and you right. Josh, I believe you need a helper from our panel. Do you have anyone in mind? Yeah, I do. Uh, could I get... Lawrence? Oh. <laughs> Lawrence. You're dressed okay, well, for it, Lawrence. Put, yeah, I'm dressed Lawrence, for to it. the demonstration lab. Lawrence, <laughs> to the demonstration gloves, lab. Gloves, gloves. All right, come on over. Glasses, good. Um, yeah, if you could chuck these on for me. And you're going to need some matches. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Don't fart. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to need this. Um, uh, what's in that? <laughs> Is it monkey pox? Well, if you could you just help me, um, could you put your hand over because I don't want anything getting out. Uh, this is a highly flammable gas. Is this past the ethics committee? <laughs> there we go. Very nice. I'm going to put a glove on myself. <laughs> um, and I'm going to get you to drop a match in there. And we'll see what happens because for the last month or so, uh, I've been collecting. Um, monkey pox. <laughs> not monkey pox. Okay. Um, I can put my hand back over, actually. Is it related Thank you. to the last question? It is related to the last question, yes. Oh. Um, oh. This. Oh. oh. <laughs> this, <laughs> here he is. These are my farts. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, if you could bring those matches over here. That's the Disgusting. <laughs> it's for science. Um, I'm going to get you to drop yeah. a match in. I'm going to count down from three, and you're going to stand back. So in three, two, two one. one. What? Oh. Didn't actually. It looks much. like it contains your humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that did. That Should have used Nate's farts. Do I need to... <laughs> no, I think I'll just go off stage now. <laughs> we can feed you that banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might just keep eating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I'll take the glasses back as well. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks though. Thank you, Josh, oh, and thank you to his fart-handed oh. assistant, Lawrence Long. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what an anticlimax. <laughs> so Keep the high fives to a minimum. <laughs> 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 Moving on to question number seven. Next question. Now, for our next question, we're joined by one of last year's National Science Quiz panellists, great friend of the quiz, Professor Alan Duffy, with a question. Hi, I'm Professor Alan Duffy from the Centre for Astrophysics and Supercomputing at Swinburne University of Technology. And I have a question for our panel. What is the blackest celestial object in our solar system? Is it A? the sun, B, the moon, or C, Pluto? What? That was uh, Alan Duffy, ladies and gentlemen, who either was standing in front of a video projector or has opened up some kind of trans-dimensional gateway. I'm not sure. So, what is the blackest celestial body in our solar system? Is it A, the sun, B, the moon, or C, Pluto? Five, 45 seconds. Your time starts now. blackest celestial body in our solar system? The sun, the moon, or Pluto? Now normally this would be a question that Kirsten is confident with, but after the shock of the Earth revolving around the sun, are, we, are you feeling confident? I'm never going to live that down, am I? Well, no, I'm just checking in. I'm checking in how we're feeling. Are we good? All right. Our time is up. Keep your answers hidden. What's the blackest celestial body in our solar system? A, the sun, B, the moon, C, Pluto. Let's see what the folks playing along on Slido thought. Whoa. Strong result for the sun, but still the moon and Pluto in contention. Captains, reveal your answers. 
The Sun and The oh, Sun, yeah. you are both correct. Yes. Nice work. <sighs> Scientists consider stars, including the Sun, to be perfectly black. Can you explain what that means? So they are a black body. So they, yeah. all light that is incident on a black body is fully absorbed. That's right, so they're actually right. absorbing light. They are emitting a lot as well, but all light that is incident on it is absorbed Doesn't get in. reflected off. Absolutely mm -hmm. correct, five points for each team. Question eight. Next question. All right, this question this is an interesting one. Everyone can relate to this. You order an 18-inch diameter large pizza. After a long wait, the waiter brings you two 12-inch medium pizzas instead and says that the 18-inch pizza wasn't available. Are you A, happy you're getting more pizza than you ordered, B, you don't mind, it's the same amount of pizza, or C, unhappy, you are getting less pizza than you ordered. A, B or C, 45 seconds, starts now. Lab assistants, you're just going to eat pizza. You guys are loving your science. Can't get enough. I've got to make more gas. <laughs> so, two 12-inch medium pizzas. Do they add up to more the same or less than an 18-inch large pizza? Jackie's actually doing some human maths with a pen. Working it out with a pen. All right, time is up. See, see, see. This is great. Okay. Now, there was some furious debate over here, but I think, I think we've locked in an answer. Yeah. Lawrence's team locked in an answer. Let's see what Slido says. Oh, strong result for C. Captains. Reveal your answers. Uh, of course. C, and you are both correct. Yes. <laughs> C, this of course comes down to the equation for uh, calculating the, uh, what are the area of a circle, pi r squared. And uh, I, have, I have all the stats here. The area of a circle, <laughs> I'm just trying to, yeah, blah, 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 yeah. We do have a mathematician here if you want to Yeah, know. we do have a mathematician. Yeah. But I'm just, um, an 18 inch pizza is 254 square inches while two 12-inch pizzas are 226 mm -hmm. square difference. inches. Uh -huh. Significant difference there. Uh, both teams got it correct. Round of applause. Mm -hmm. yeah. Moving on to the next question. And our next question. And our next question comes to us from a special guest within our medical sciences community. Hi, my name is Professor Sharon Lewin. I'm director of the Peter Doherty Institute for Infection and Immunity, a joint venture of the University of Melbourne and Royal Melbourne Hospital. And I'm also Melbourne Laureate Professor of Medicine at the University of Melbourne. And I've been very active in the COVID-19 response as director of the Doherty Institute. We've been active in developing new tests for COVID, developing new treatments for COVID, and also, um, uh, in developing the mathematical models that shaped much of our policy across Australia. I have a question for the panel. The messenger RNA in the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine works by A, injecting the person with a small amount of inactive COVID virus protein, B, providing the instructions to our cells to produce an inactive COVID virus protein, or C, directly activating the immune system. Thank you, Sharon Lewin. So, the messenger RNA in the mRNA COVID vaccine works by A, injecting the person with a small amount of inactive COVID virus protein, B, providing the instructions for our cells to produce an inactive COVID virus protein, or C, directly activating the immune system. 45 seconds starts now. does the messenger RNA in the mRNA COVID vaccine work? A question I hope we asked ourselves before we all got vaccinated.
time is up. Keep your answers hidden and let's see what the folks playing along thought on Slido. Ooh. Ooh. Very strong audience. answer for <laughs> B, providing instructions to ourselves. Captains, reveal your answers. B and B. B. You're all correct. It is B. Yes. Providing the instructions to ourselves to produce an inactive COVID virus protein. Hey, little survey. We're quite serious about COVID safety here in the theatre uh, and in Australia generally. Uh, hands up who, who has not had COVID yet. Hands up who's not had COVID. Oh, well oh, done. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That is well great. Uh, and hands up who has had COVID. Who has had COVID? Right. And who's got it now? Who's <laughs> a couple of people. That's good. That's not bad. Probably more by the end of the night, but that's fine. That's fine. Moving on to the next question. Oh, on. Hang on. No, we're not. <laughs> it's time for a score check. Yeah! <laughs> well done. All right, our Labour sisters are in position. Nate's team is on. 55 points. Lawrence's team is on. 55 points. Wow, so how are we feeling at this point? It scores a level. Oh, wow. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, the poo is the poo is flying across the room. <laughs> it's very close. So are you are you confident at this stage? Did you expect it to be this close? No, I thought we'd walk all over them. Uh, and despite <laughs> despite me trying to tank the whole thing, somehow <laughs> We're still equal points. I, I'm, I, I'm not confident in the slightest. Okay, that's, it's interesting. Nate says he's not confident, but he did think that he was going to wipe the floor with you. <laughs> yeah. um, did that hurt your feelings? I mean, it does hurt my feelings, but also he's a man who points at cartoon clouds in the morning, so... <laughs> Ooh. You're just Ooh. jealous that you don't get to. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the weather, but it's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So, it's going to go down to the wire. 55 points apiece. It's time for our next Guess the Round. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. How does this work? Yes. And this time, I'll be asking our teams to guess the element. Guess Ooh. the element. element. Now, remember, you really jumped the gun last yes. time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll explain <laughs> again how it goes. I'm going to give you three <laughs> options. They're all elements. Got it. So if you buzz in at that point, you're fools to yourselves. Yeah. Okay. You're playing fast and loose with your team's future at that point. Yeah. I'm going to give you three elements. They're all real elements. Uh. Then I'm going to give you a series of clues to help you know which element you need to guess. Same. Yes. Now the Same. first team to buzz in and correctly guess which element will receive 10 points. But if you get it wrong, I'm going to keep giving clues and the other team gets a go. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we clear? Yes. Yes. Crystal. As clear as hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, your element choices for guess the element are A. Scandium. Oh, no. B. Lithium. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or C. Yttrium. Get stuffed. Oh. No idea. No. Scandium, lithium, yttrium. And well done resisting the urge just to buzz in already. <laughs> First clue. This element was discovered by a part-time chemist in the 18th century. What? And this element is named after a Swedish village. Oh. E oh. My partner. No one tempted. No one told it's, it's tempting, isn't it? Oh, it's tempting. It's a little bit Norse, doesn't it? Yeah. How, much, how, much, how much Nordic noir have you been watching yeah. on SBS? <laughs> okay, second clue. It is an essential element in ceramic superconductors. When cooled down to minus 196 degrees, these superconductors can make magnets levitate. Oh! Oh! Lawrence! Your team is buzzed in. Jackie, Ready? Jackie, Jackie confident it. again Go on the it. guess the question. Yttrium? C Your answer is C, yttrium. Yeah. Are you confident about this? Um, not That's not the face of confidence. Not really. <laughs> not really? But you're going with it anyway? My team loves me no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Well, he's going to love you a little bit more. It is C, yttrium. Oh! Oh! Well done. Legend. And... Caitlin has 
The, uh, the symbol for yttrium, one of the easiest to remember, I would say. Y for yttrium. There we go. Mm. And that's some yttrium right there. This is, so this is um, uh, yttrium Ooh. cooled down with a magnet levitating. That's some cool business right there. That is an expensive wombat poo. <laughs> that is, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Magical, golden. Yeah. That's an ignoble that's the, that's the poo of a wombat that's a rapper. Um, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, time for another score check. Oh, no. Oh, oh, is it or not? Is it? Hang on, wait, stop. We've already just done one. We just done no, one. I forgot to throw that card away. I'm very sorry. <laughs> it is not time for a score check. My apologies. I'm going to be fired before the end of the night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we get 10 points. To Lawrence's team for guessing for the correct answer then and it's time for another fast true or false round oh, ladies and gentlemen I hate this round. true or false and remember play at home but you got to play at home quickly you got to get your answers in before our players on stage do are we ready, ready. five points for a correct answer Good. five points off for a wrong answer let's begin Jackie true or false the smallest thing you can see with an electron microscope is an atom No, it is true. Oh, it is true. <laughs> Barbara, true or false? Humans have more than five senses. True. It is true. In addition to touch, smell, taste, hearing and sight, we have senses for temperature, pain, proprioception, body awareness, as well as the heebie-jeebies and the ubu boobles obviously. <laughs> uh, Bradley, true or false? Antarctica has been covered in ice for 15 million years. True. It is true. Yes. But 90 million years ago, it was covered by a huge, lush Forest. rainforest. Yeah. Kirsten, true or false? Large reflectors installed on the moon's surface can debunk moon landing conspiracy theories, Lawrence. <laughs> it is absolutely true. It is yes. true. Ugh. The reflectors, we can point. Is it we can point light up, it will bounce straight you can, back. You can tip a pill, your laser, and come back. It right will back. come straight back, it's mm -hmm. the only thing on the, nothing else on Mars could reflect a laser straight back to Earth. The moon, the moon track. Oh, the moon. Yeah. Or Mars. Same problem. Same. <laughs> uh, true or false? Lawrence. Humans evolved from chimpanzees. False. Correct. It is false. We have a common ancestor but uh, that we're both descended from, but we are not descended from chimpanzees. Nate, true or false, lightning cannot strike twice in the same spot. False. Yeah, totally false. Otherwise, why would you bother having lightning rods? Yeah, oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Where is that? Thank you, Nate. Yeah. <laughs> I was on a ship that got hit by lightning twice, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that explains look, it. yeah the Navy ships have, have like a coil down. So that explains twice. what, Lawrence? <laughs> how things can hit things twice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how I knew the <laughs> Jackie, true or false? Uh, polyethylene, one of the world's most common plastics, is not degradable. Um, true. No, it is false. <laughs> it does degrade. But it could take up to 450 years to degrade. I hate this round, Charlie. Yeah. Ask me more yttrium questions. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, true or false? The peak of Mount Everest was once under the sea. Hey, no helping from the audience. True or false? Oh, true. It, that is correct. The Himalayas, which have been rising at five to ten millimetres every year, once uh, they're actually made from marine limestone that contain 400 million year old fossils of sea creatures and shells. Wow. So if you're ever up there, grab a fossil. Um, Bradley, true or false, if you started drinking coffee and didn't stop, the caffeine would kill you before the water. False. It is false, absolutely correct. A fatal dose of caffeine is 100 cups of coffee but you would die of water poisoning first. Kirsten, true or false, blood carried in your veins has a faint blue colour, which is where the term blue-blooded comes from. Yes, true. It is false. Oh, damn it. Oh. My aunt's going to be blood, so disappointed the blood, in me. The blood is red. It's red no matter what. However, veins can have a bluish appearance. Oh. Lawrence, true or false, I flipped a coin nine times and it came up heads every time. So my next flip, there is a higher chance that it will come up tails. True or false? False. 
Correct. Because it's always 50-50 with a coin. Yeah, it's yes. an yes. independent. A coin doesn't yes. know what happened before. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and our final question for the true or false round goes to Nate. True or false, you cannot kill a virus. Oh, oh, that's oh, mean, that's because mean. viruses aren't alive to begin with, but you can rip them apart and make them dysfunctional, but I'm going to say true, you can't kill a virus. Correct, it is true. They are dead yeah. to begin with, they are not alive, yeah. and therefore cannot be killed. That ends our true or false round, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh, that was a nasty one. Mm. So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us... To the end of the quiz. Can I get a round of applause for all of our contestants? Oh, is that the now, while we tally up the final scores oh, this evening, no. uh, uh, oh. sorry, while we tally up the final scores this evening, uh, I would like to thank everyone who put in a huge effort to, to make, tonight's, make tonight's quiz possible. Not just our contestants here on stage, but all of the scientists who went into writing the questions, and also all of our partners and sponsors who are on screen right now, who made the whole event possible. They've teamed up and worked together tirelessly over the last few months to bring this together. Can I get a massive round of applause for them, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Woo! So, we're going to tally that up. Can I just ask teams, how confident are you feeling right now? Uh, not very. <laughs> it, well. was, it was deadlocked at 55 all going into the final two rounds. How are we feeling? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think we've yeah. lost by five. Wow. We, Sorry? It, it's going to be close. It's Barb be close. thinks we're down by five. She's the mathematician. Yeah. yeah Barbara, I, I think you're the most confident that of you've been telling. Of being slimed. <laughs> of being slimed. <laughs> yes. So no, very no. confident we're being slimed. Lawrence, Lawrence's team, well, how are you feeling? Are you, yeah. you slime-worthy this evening? I mean, I've done the calculations, <laughs> and uh, after that response, I think I'm less confident. Um, <laughs> it's been an emotional journey. It has been an emotional journey, but everyone has, has done a wonderful job. And have you all had fun and learned something here tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. 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 Absolutely, and thank you for joining us at home. So. While our teams uh, work out the scores, while we tally everything up and our teams yeah. get ready to be slimed or not slimed, we're going to take a look at some of the incredible scientists undertaking important scientific research right here in Australia. Take a look. Little rule of science, when there's a big explosion, the experiment is over. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, can I get a round of applause for all of our contestants tonight? Our two teams doing a wonderful job. And first up, we are ready to announce our audience winner from here in the theatre who has had the most correct answers in the fastest time. They will receive this beautiful science quiz trophy as well as the prize of $500. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. There is the leaderboard. And our winner tonight is... That's right. 
equal on correct answers, but they were answered fastest by Lucas Sharp. Wow. Lucas, come up and get your prize. The applause going. He's still got a bit to go. Yeah, Take it away, Lucas Sharp. Look, Lucas, there is your trophy. There is your prize. And I feel even better that you won. You're a St Kilda fan. So much pain in your life. I'm glad we could bring you some joy here tonight. <laughs> Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Let's this way. Look at Sharp. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Can you believe it? We've tallied all of the results. And we have a tiebreaker, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Scores 11. Oh. Oh. One of these teams will be slimed, the others will walk away victorious, and it is all decided now with one tiebreaker question. I will read out the tiebreaker question. Pay attention, everyone. Captains, grab your letters. It is a multiple choice question. I will read the question out. The first team to hold up the correct letter option will be tonight's quiz champions. Are you ready? Lawrence's team, are you ready? Yeah, oh, it's good. yes. Correct. Team Nate, are you ready? We are ready. We're, we're prepared to scream. I'm so glad it's come down to a tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, plants growing in cold, elevated sites in southern Australia tend to have smaller leaves than plants growing at sea level. Is this because A, plants in cooler regions receive less light energy and cannot produce large leaves? B, small leaves do not lose heat as easily, so they are able to resist frost damage? Or C, plants at low elevation receive more rain, so they grow larger leaves? A, B or C? Oh, Lawrence's team was first with B. Hang on, oh, hang on, okay. There's a dispute. This is going to be decided by the audience. Who, no! had, their, who had their letter up first? He, was it Team Nate? Yeah! yeah! Or was it Team Lawrence? Yeah! It's Team Lawrence. Your answer is B. The question is... Is that correct? Are you correct? And what was your answer? It was B also. It was B also. That's, that's fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. You must all feel very tense. Very. So it's not me? No, 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 I haven't said that. I've just decided that you answered first. Yeah. That's all. Okay, okay. Oh, it's a shambles. It's gone to chaos. Everyone's falling apart. But that's okay. The correct answer is B. Lawrence oh! Oh! Our National Science Quiz Champion, Lawrence's team. And I'm sorry to say, losing out by the narrowest of margin is Team Nate. Who are about to be slimed? Yeah! Lab assistants, prepare them for sliming. Lawrence, how are you feeling? You walked away victorious. This is the greatest science prize since the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Some might say better. Round of applause for Lawrence's team, ladies and gentlemen. So, Nate, a valiant effort. Your team could barely have done more. It came down to a, a fraction of a second, and the audience threw you guys under a bus. Let's that's, say that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's where I lost it. Uh, obviously, not enough of you watch news breakfast tomorrow <laughs> morning. I will remind you, I have a 2:45 a.m. alarm, but don't worry about it. I've stayed up late for you. Thanks for the sliming. I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> you are ecstatic to be slimed. I am. And. Your teammates are all We wanted to be slimed all along. Sorry. I think that's why I'm slow. <laughs> oh, it's controversial. All right, folks, the time has come. It's slime time. <laughs> Let's count them down. Oh, Five, four, three, two, one. Slime time. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
I think we're... Congratulations, everyone. That's it for the National Science Quiz 2022. Put your hands together for all of our wonderful contestants here tonight. We hope that you have fun tonight here in the theatre and playing along online anywhere in the world. And remember to give science a go. Good sciencing, everyone. Good night. <laughs>